that's the only solution to any of these problems. To solve the problem with the media, you can't just allow tabloid and celebrity gossip and clickbait to rule over you, otherwise you will destroy media. You have to go through the expensive and lengthy and boring process of investigative journalism because that provides a re the real substantive meaning behind your industry because no one will be bothered paying attention to journalism if it's all just nonsense and cheap frills and just junk. So, even if it gives you a net loss, even if it's very expensive and few people will click onto it, and then it won't have any substantive meaning in the long term in terms of your, your profitability margins, you just have to invest in good investigative journalism. You just have to invest in good investigative journalism. The same goes for Hollywood. If Hollywood continues down this path of just continuously emphasizing the blood and guts and sex and nudity and neglecting telling good stories, then people will stop going to the movies and people will stop paying attention to what Hollywood are doing because they've already seen it all before and they will not see anything new this time and so they won't be bothered. And so the only way you're going to maintain a fan base and a loyal consumer base for Hollywood movies into the future is if you regain and rebuild and return to what makes movies so terrific, which is storytelling and characters and actually building up tension and looking at the difficulties of the human experience and the contradictions it's very boring, it's very expensive to do, and no one will thank you for it, but it has to be done. And that's the solution to cricket. That is the solution to keeping cricket safe and preventing it from collapsing within the next 20 years. Maintain the substantive content of cricket. How that happens, I'm not going to say. I'm not even going to say that first-class cricket has to be the number one form of the game. I'm not even going to say that first-class cricket has to be the number one form of the game. It could move to the 50-over game, 50-over form of the game. The point I'm making is that the substantive content of cricket, which is boring, which is tedious, which is dot balls, which is singles, has to be maintained in whatever form it needs to in order for the real professionality of the sport to maintain its position within world sport. Any attempt at just Any attempt at diving headfirst into the world of raw, cheap, emotional thrills and reaching the point where the entire cricket of summer is just short 5-over games and 10-over games full of boundaries and wickets, it might be really thrilling for a short while, but then people will get used to it, people will get comfortable with that emotional experience, and there'll be no way to increase it there'll be no way to increase that dosage because you've maxed out and you're an, addic you're an addict. You're addicted to the, sh the raw emotional thrills of cricket. You've lost your contempl... You've ro lost all proportionality. You've lost your sense of identity and you have reached the bottom of your death spiral. That will be the end of cricket. The only way to prevent that is to hold on tight to the substantive content of cricket, which is the detailed, boring contemplation. Yes, it's going to be more expensive. 
It's going to be boring. No one's going to thank you for it. No one will care. You'll get less viewers. The advertisers won't care. And in the end, people will keep pressuring you to just cut this adrift and let it die. And it's only by holding on to that, only by holding on to the substantive content of cricket, will it survive. And just to re-emphasise, I'm not going to be saying what the substantive content of cricket needs to be, because cricket can evolve over time. Because uh, there was a time when we had, when the county circuit had three day first class matches, but we had timeless test matches. I'm not going to say that we need to go back to timeless test matches, or that they need to be all two day first class matches. Cricket should evolve naturally through the organic processes of the sport being played by more people across the world over the course of time. Only then will we get to see the true richness of the sport as its position within the human experience because that is of course what makes cricket so great. Cricket is a human sport, it's a historical sport, it is deep in, it has roots deep inside of human society and the way that humans experience life and see themselves. And as long as cricket can tie itself to genuine human fascination and contemplation and mystery and curiosity, then it will be safe. If cricket decides to abandon this sort of humanistic element of the sport and instead dives into this shallow and superficial world of raw emotional thrills that go away after a couple of seconds, then it will disappear. And right now, as, wo as world capitalism goes into a crisis, as old cultures collapse and die, as everything we knew about our lives is changing and disappearing, and as the world heads towards bigger and bigger wars and bigger and bigger misery, cricket might well go the same way. We might see cricket die in the same way that other cultures across the world have. I don't want that to happen, but there is a good chance that that will happen if we can't wrestle back control and stop the market forces from pushing world cricket into this death drive. 